What's up? What's the weatherman here with another banger list? Because you know your boy don't miss. And today I've brought you guys Crystal Beast, or as I've named the deck, Crystal Chaos. So this deck takes advantage of Crystal Beast's ability to deck thin and search for level fours, as well as back row to make a really ideal inboard in this deck. So for starters, we should talk about the skill because the skill is what pushes Crystal Beast to the next level. The skill we play is Order of Chaos, which you should recognize from Undead's video. However, I will still go over it with you guys right now. So this skill does have three effects and you can activate every effect once per turn each So that is really nice for starters Also during the duel that this skill is used We can only special summon utopia monsters and monsters with a level or rank 4 So the first skill we can reveal one V salamander which we play three of in the deck And we can place one number 39 utopia from outside of our deck to the graveyard The second effect of this skill is we can return up to two cards Okay, keep that in mind you do not have to return turn two cards it is up to two cards from our hand or monster zone then if there are no monsters on our field we can normal summon one v salamander in addition to our normal summon slash set during this turn and then lastly if we control a number 39 utopia we can set one rank up magic limited variance force from our deck or graveyard to the field which is really nice and because of this skill we do have a one card combo that summons a untargetable monster negate by simply having v salamander in our hand so i did read the skill to you guys and i told you how the skill lets us reveal a v salamander and place a utopia in the graveyard however i have not told you guys what v salamander himself does so v salamander on normal summon will be able to target a utopia monster in the graveyard and special summon that target to the field so that is really nice then from here what we'll do is activate the third portion of the skill which since we control a utopia on the field we'll be able to place a rank up magic limited variance force from either our deck or our graveyard to the field and what Baron force says is we can target one rank four exes monster we control special summon from our extra deck one number c monster that is one rank higher than that monster we control by using it as exes material this special summon monster is treated as an exes summon and exes material attached to that target also become exes material onto the summon monster so we will be targeting our utopia with our rank up spell to rank it up into our ultimate leo utopia ray this right here is a really nice boss monster 2500 attack 2000 defense but let's not get used to those stats just yet once per turn we can detach one material from this card and equip one zw monster from our deck or extra deck to this card as if it were equipped by that monster's effect this effects activation cannot be negated okay this effects activation cannot be negated so if someone wants to affect valor ultimate leo they need to do it preemptively because it can't be negated so if you do activate effect valor after i detach after i've already activated i'm going to still equip from the deck there's nothing you can do to stop that i am going to equip from the deck I'm going to be untargetable. I'm going to be able to get that monster negate off and all of that good stuff. I'm not going to at the time, because I will still be negated, you know, technically speaking, my monster effect, but I am going to get that equipped onto the field. Once per turn, while this guy is equipped with a ZW monster card, you can target one effect monster our opponent controls and negate its effects. And if we do have its attack, the ZW that we choose to play personally is Tornado Bringer because Tornado Bringer does allow us to be untargetable. If this is equipped onto a Utopia monster, not only do we gain 1300 attack, which is gonna be pushing our bad boy to 3800. Um, while the card is equipped to a monster, our opponent cannot target that monster with card effects. And then if the monster equipped would be destroyed by battle, we could destroy the ZW Tornado Bringer instead of our monster. So we are going to be protected by battle once and we cannot be targeted. So that is really dope for the deck. We do actually play the Crystal Beast package like I've been saying, which is what actually pushes this to the next deck. And personally, I think this might be the best deck to play Order of Chaos until I've seen otherwise. Pegasus is not too much to talk about. When he's summoned, you can place a Crystal Beast monster from our hand, deck, or graveyard into the face-up spell trap zone as a continuous spell. And then if this face-up monster would be destroyed we could place it into the spell trap zone instead as a continuous spell card the reason why crystal beast is really nice is because they play cards like rainbow bridge rainbow bridge allows us to add a spell trap from our deck to our hand so we play three copies of rainbow bridge we also play crystal bond which is searchable by rainbow bridge and crystal bond allows for us to not only search for the monsters the crystal beast monsters that is but it also allows for us to place a crystal beast monster in the spell trap zone why is this so relevant? Well, because Crystal Beasts also have the trap 
Crystal Conclave, which is also searchable by Rainbow Bridge. So I only played two of it because I didn't want to necessarily brick on having the, the Salamander stuff. If we don't, we don't always have the Crystal Beside, even though you are likely to have it. So we do play a couple generic cards, but the Conclave is really nice. Once per turn, if a face up Crystal Beast monster we control is destroyed by battle or card effect, we can special summon a Crystal Beast monster from our deck. But the main effect that we activate of Conclave is we can send this face up card from the field to the graveyard, then target one Crystal Beast card we control. So this can either be a Crystal Beast that is summoned in our monster zone, or this could be a Crystal Beast that is in our spell trap zone. Either way, we can target one of our Crystal Beast cards and then one card our opponent controls and return them both to the hand. So this gives us a bounce. The reason why this is really nice is because we can do this alongside the Utopia play. Because not only does V Salamander give us a one card play, but V Salamander himself stays on the field after we do that one card play so if you also open a pegasus for example or a topaz then we'll be able to normal summon a crystal beast topaz or pegasus beside v salamander and then go into a rank four generic monster of your choice so you could play whatever you want but i choose to play abyss dweller in the deck because abyss dweller is great versus a lot of decks it's good in the tinny matchup it's good against orcus it's good against bls it's good against blue eyes it's just a really good card it's really great against the meta once per turn during either player's turn we can detach one exes material from this card and then any card effects that activate in our opponent's graveyard cannot be activated so by simply having v salamander plus another level four in hand We'll not only be able to have that Leo, but we'll have the Abyss Dweller. So we'll have that Monster Negate as well as the Abyss Dweller here. And you may be asking yourself, well, hey, how am I going to get that other Pegasus on the field? Well, you don't even need to actually have a way to special summon Pegasus. The skill itself actually allows for you to place two normal summons on the field. So what the skill says is very tricky, which is why I see why you may not understand it. So return up to two cards to the deck from your hand or monster zone. And then if there are no monsters on the field, you can normal summon one V Salamander in addition to your normal summon, right? So it doesn't matter when this additional normal summon is. And that's how we actually cheese it out. When you summon the V Salamander, it just needs to be while we control no monsters on the field. So what you'll do is you'll activate the skill and return one card from your hand to the deck. Now, you may be saying, oh my God, so we're gonna be starting off with a three card hand if we're going first, not, really because pegasus is going to be grabbing a card from the deck if you have it bridge is going to be searching a card uh bond is going to be searching a card there's a lot of searchers in the deck you're more than likely going to be adding back the card that you put back anyway as well as if you happen to open up the equip or if you happen to open the bury and force spell you can place those back in the deck and then search for it with the skill anyway or search for it with the utopia uh the leo ray so either way we're really not missing out on card advantage that deeply here but regardless, you'll activate this skill here. And then when you do this, you'll normal summon the V Salamander first. So even though we normal summon the V Salamander, we have not yet actually used our additional normal summon. So this is where you would normal summon the Pegasus or the Topaz beside our V Salamander. And then we'd be able to go into a rank four of Abyss Dweller or another generic rank four if you wanted to play it. Some other rank fours that you could play that I'll mention here. You could also play Giant Hand. Giant Hand would give you a Monster Negate. So you could have two Monster Negates on your field. Target Negate with the Leo Ray. And you could also Target Negate with the Giant Hand. You could also play Roach, which would negate the special summon of a level five or higher monster. But there are more rank fours you could play for turn two, turn one. These are just the better ones that I have here, and I just chose to go with Abyss Dweller. Next, we also have Crystal Promise, which is also searchable by Rainbow Bridge. Allows for us to target a Crystal Beast card in our Spell and Trap Zone and Special Summon that target. So like I said, on Normal Summon, Special Summon, Flip Summon, whatever, if you summon Pegasus, it's going to place a Crystal Beast either from your hand, deck, or graveyard into the Spell Trap Zone. So this Promise, which is searchable by Rainbow Bridge, which kind of makes it so that we have four of it, is going to be able to essentially Monster Reborn for Crystal Beast a monster from our spell trap zone so that'll be another way that we could get the rank four off you don't actually have to have the v salamander in your hand to make the rank four play you could just hard summon the utopia by getting two crystal beast on the field and then you'll still be able to activate the skill and grab that baryon force from your deck the last two cards we play in the main deck are just two copies of effect Veiler and two copies of dd crow so 
DD Crow, like you already know, during either player's turn, you can discard this card to the grave, target a card in our opponent's grave, and banish that target. And then Effect Veiler says during our opponent's main phase, we can send this card from our hand to the graveyard, target one face-up effect monster our opponent controls. That face-up monster has its effects negated until the end of this turn. So I just play these cards because, for one, they're really good hand traps and they do affect the meta. But also, Crystal Beast is not a huge fan of back row. We like playing our own back row because it's searchable. However, we do place a lot of stuff in the spell trap zone crystal beast pegasus is going to be placing something in a spell trap zone if you activate crystal bond that's going to place something in the spell trap zone so and if your crystal beasts get destroyed you may want to place them in the spell trap zone so that you can activate conclave as well as conclave itself will be in the spell trap zone so for that reason you don't really want to clog your back row up i know it's very easy to say oh let's just play idp let's play conclave let's play this trap this trap this trap but you're going to be in scenarios where you can't set them and i do think hand Hand traps just really go well with the deck because we really don't want to set a lot of back row anyway as well as the leo ray does equip himself so that's just another card that's going to be filling up your spell trap zone so because of that maybe you'd even want to go higher on the hand traps and play less conclave i play two conclave two valor two crow maybe you want to play one conclave i do think that would still be fine and you can maybe go up on something else in the crystal beast engine or another disruption another hand trap or something of that so the other cards we play in the extra deck is obviously the utopia himself because sometimes we do need to hard summon utopia as well as we do also play utopia lightning and utopia lightning is really dope so he can be summoned on top of utopia obviously and then all of the material that were attached to utopia will go to utopia lightning if this card battles your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step and then once per chain during damage calculation in either player's turn if this card battles an opponent's monster while it has utopia as an exes material we can detach two material from this card and then our attack becomes 5,000 during damage calculation this is just a good way to attack for game to also beat over maybe a problem card utopia lightning is just really dope i just felt like we might as well go hard on the utopia package i also play number c39 utopia ray v because our v salamander actually has a second effect as well as this can also be summoned by barian force our rank up spell so by doing the same thing summoning a utopia actually we don't technically have to summon utopia we could just summon any rank four um, but we won't be able to grab the spell with the skill unless we summon utopia so we'll have utopia on the field we can activate our skill which like i said is not once per duel it is simply once per turn so we'll be able to activate and grab our barrier force from the deck if we have not yet used it or if this is past the first activation of the skill then we can grab it from the graveyard target one of our utopias and turn them into utopia ray v this card while in our possession if destroyed by card effect or i'm sorry destroyed by our opponent's card you can target one exes monster in the graveyard and return that target to the extra deck that's really nice because we can also recycle our leo and potentially summon leo again if this card has a utopia monster as material it gains this effect once per turn you can detach one material from this card then target one monster our opponent controls and destroy that monster if it was a face-up monster inflict damage to our opponent equal to half the attack of the destroyer monster that they had on the field but with our v salamander we get a better effect actually so with v salamander we can actually target a utopia ray v we control equip this monster to that monster and then we'll actually be able to change its effect to this effect we can detach one exes material from that monster and if we do destroy all monsters our opponent controls and then inflict 500 damage to them for each monster destroyed so you can easily burn your opponent for 1500 damage if they've got a board full of monsters in which case it'll be very very easy to go for game attacking with essentially anything in the deck so we have a board wipe in the deck we've got some non-target removal which is really cool we've got the utopia lightning to beat over stuff and the last two cards we do play in the extra deck is simply castell the sky blaster musketeer we can detach one material from this guy target a face up monster on the field and change it to face down defense we can also detach two material from this card target one other face up card on the field and shuffle it into the deck those are both really nice effects and then we lastly play number 70 malevolent sin just detach a material target one monster our opponent controls and banish it until our opponent's next standby phase so that's really nice just an easy way to get some removal to try to go for a game. 
that's pretty much the deck though but before i do jump into the gameplay i did want to show you guys some other cards you could potentially play in the deck some other stuff you might want just to give you the options that you would play so for the utopia leo you may want to play pegasus twin saber I only play one equip, but if you wanted to play more, or maybe you don't even want to be untargetable, maybe you want a double monster negate. Well, Twin Saber does say, while well, this card is equipped to a monster, you can negate a monster effect activated on the field. So this one doesn't actually target. So if this were to be equipped to your Leo Ray, you could have two monster negates. You could target negate a monster with your Leo, right? Or if a monster effect is activated on the field, you could just negate it by having the twin saber equipped to your Leo. So you can get two negates on the turn, which is really nice. Really, really, really nice. We also have Eagle Claw here, which is a trap negate. If you have this equipped, we'll be able to negate a trap card or a trap effect that was activated on our opponent's side of the field. So you could have this and then be able to negate a monster as well as be able to negate a trap, which is something that maybe you do find likely. Maybe in a tournament, you want to side deck into this because people are playing a lot of trap heavy decks. I do think the deck does play through back row very easily because of the crystal beast engine really helping the v salamander side but it never hurts to have some trap negation especially in the meta right now the meta format you really don't want to get idp we really try our best to play around idp as best as we can but you can't always do it and eagle claw would be an easy way to play around that because the fact that leo can't be targeted idp is kind of the only card that bothers him so you really don't have to negate anything you could literally just wait for idp to flip We've also got Leo Arms. Um, we don't play them personally, but you could play this for that Luna Light matchup. It is a little bit annoying versus them. Um, you could have this in the extra so that we could actually equip this directly from our extra deck to Leo and boost ourselves up 3,000 attack points, which is really nice. We could also send this equip card to the graveyard and then our monster will be able to make a second attack on a monster during the battle phase. So this is just something we could do here to really get over some problem cards as well. I just wanted to mention those because the more you know, we gotta set you up for greatness. So now that I've finished with that, we can jump right into some gameplay. We're going against BLS, we're going second. I believe we had the DD Crow in hand, so we're ready to just go ahead and say, screw them, don't even play the game. And we do. So we've got that DD Crow in hand and we're going second. So we're just gonna, we toggle on right here. Immediately DD Crow passes to us. So we've got that bad boy. We're gonna reveal, right? And then here we're gonna return one of our rainbow bridges to the deck. So now we're gonna normal summon the Salamander. And he DD crows the Utopia, but that's fine. We've got the Pegasus. So we're gonna normal summon that Pegasus. It's got the effect Valor, which does make sense. He doesn't want us to get that extra search off, which, you know, I get it. Um, we're gonna go Utopia. And from here, we're going to activate the skill. I guess I probably was thinking, like, why didn't, you know, he probably could have utopia uh, not a utopia, but he could have affect Valor the uh, the Leo. Um, like, you know, so maybe he should have saved it for the Leo instead. But no, I see he had extra effect Valor. Um, so we attack for 25 there through all the hand traps. Jesus Christ. He's going to activate Econ, which means he has nothing. It is over. We are going to now activate, finally equipping ourselves, making ourselves 3,800. And we don't want to waste anybody's time. We just go in for game 3,800 to the mother loving chin. On to the next. All righty, so we're going second. We do have an ideal hand, but this is more of a turn one hand, to be honest with you. Um, so we're going against Tinnies. So he's going to summon out the Mapora, making his play. He's going to link into Muck, which makes sense. Um, this hand is like, okay, but it's not like amazing, to be honest with you. It's not amazing. We've got double Salamander, which is unfortunate, and then Topaz and Pegasus. So it's like, you know, we can make a rank four as well as the, the Leo, but it's, it's, it'll be ugly. It's kind of ugly. Discard, it looks like he's going for the link three plays, which is going to be protected by the Shatana Engrave, as well as the Mapora Engrave, and then activating three effects. Um, he should be playing Legend of the Heroes, and gain that 2k but is what it is we're gonna return the third copy jesus christ of v salamander and we're gonna normal summon v salamander bringing that utopia he does not have an effect valor or a crow so it looks like our utopia is going through we're gonna be able to special summon that utopia so now we're gonna activate order of chaos 
and now we've got that rank up spell here and we're gonna go into our bad boy leo so just seeing what he's got here it's not an amazing situation so we're gonna equip ourselves we're gonna go here right and we're gonna rank into a best dweller so why do i do this you may be asking right so i'm looking at his graveyard i'm bigger than him however he's got the maporan grave which does stop targeting i believe it's not the one that reduces us but he does have the shatana which if his guy gets destroyed it's gonna banish the shatana and then resummon the link we just destroyed and he's gonna pop one of us non-target i don't want him to do that so i'm gonna summon the abyss dweller and activate my abyss dweller so that he can't activate any grave effects so now when i beat over his bad boy does nothing so now he used all that card advantage right he used all of the cards he had to do nothing and i'm gonna activate it again because now he's still not activating anything in the grave and he's just gonna pass because there's not much he can do and we're just gonna go for it all here gonna reveal the salamander just to flex on him a little bit normal summon even returned we didn't even have to return summon the utopia now with utopia and field we can activate to grab that barrier force from the graveyard and we're gonna go up into our number c39 ray v Topia is on the field here and noise noise just gonna pop it burn them and we're just gonna go in with this field full of monsters nice 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 on to the next let's go alrighty 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 we're going first we're going first I think we've got the sauce so this is actually I haven't even brought that up but we honestly get like three disruptions pretty often and this is another one of those hands of having three disruptions. So we've got our boy Salamander, we've got the Conclave, we've already got and the Bond. That's three disruptions right there. So we reveal, gonna normal summon, special summon that Utopia from the graveyard so that we can activate the skill and get that rank up spell from the deck. Now we're gonna rank up the Utopia, go into our Leo Ray. Come on, now summon that bad boy. I think I've been skipping his animation, so I'm gonna let it play this time. It's the final clip. Come on now, Power Rangers. I was about to sing Transformers, but I like I, I said Power Rangers, but I was definitely about to sing Transformers. Um, so we're gonna get that equip. Gonna search for Bond. So right here, typically you do search for Pegasus, right? But we don't want to fill up our spell trap zone because if we summon Pegasus, it's gonna it's gonna want us to put something in the spell trap zone. And you can just say no to it. But that's just weird. So, plus you wanna actually keep the Pegasus. You wanna end up having the Pegasus. So instead, I add the Topaz to our hand, put the Crystal Beast Pegasus into the Spell Trap Zone because I'm going to set this Conclave and Conclave is gonna return our Crystal Beast card to our hand. So we're gonna go into Dweller. Now we've got the Dweller, the Leo Ray on board and a Conclave set. We're gonna to toggle on and flip up immediately going into that Conclave. This is a continuous trap. I like to get it out the way. So we immediately activate that Dweller, turning off that graveyard. We're gonna negate the bird. We don't want him actually sending the grave. He's gonna activate the Lunar Light Fusion, unfortunately. So that sucks. Right here though, big brain plays. Big brain plays by me. Damn, hold on. That's hard. Oh, damn, that's hard, low key. I'm hard, low key. Anyway, so this was low key. This was low key a play. So what Leo Dancer says is this card can make a second attack during each battle phase once per turn at the end of the damage step. If this card attacked, you can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls, right? But here's the thing. Conclave doesn't say return your opponent's card to the hand. It just says I have to return a Crystal Beast to my hand and then target any card on the field and put it back. So I'm not gonna give him a card to attack. I'm gonna give my guy back. I put the, the Dweller back in my extra deck. You don't get rid of my Dweller. And then he scooped, I guess because he thought that if he attacked into my Leo, that it would still activate. But nobody, nobody, you just suicided. You are stupid, you played yourself, you played yourself. Anyway, that's been your forecast. Your Sniper King Weatherman is signing out. Team 6K gone. Hey, why they gotta hate on me? I done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key. They ain't wanna come work with the kid, but I'm flexing with Zay on beats. How they ask for a spot at the gym, but they leave all the weight on me. I don't ask them to wait on me. 
They would ask where they gonna be With a song if they wanted the weather, man I ain't asking to pay no fees She was homeless and needed a spot I ain't ask her to pay no lease I ain't ask her to say no please I ain't ask her to make no cheese Scream fake, but it ain't on me Got clean so it ain't no streets Why green if it ain't no keeps Brought cream so it ain't no beef My team say it ain't no chief My demon they hang on me They seemingly ain't no peace I seen him he ain't no beast For real